Galaxies are the building blocks of the universe. The largest galaxies contain about a hundred billion stars, and there are about a hundred billion galaxies in the observable universe. This is a huge amount of mass. Yet, one of the most dramatic discoveries of astronomers in the past 20 years or so is the realization that this huge amount of mass accounts only for a tiny fraction of what our universe contains. Only about 5% of the contents of the universe is the ordinary matter of which stars, planets, and people are made. This matter is made up of the familiar atoms of the periodic table of the elements. About 25% of what the universe contains is different. This is also matter, but it is matter that does not emit radiation of any kind. It is dark. Dark matter. Dark matter is thought to consist of elementary particles that were created very soon after the Big Bang, and it is invisible. But, as we shall see, it plays a key role in the evolution of our universe. The lion's share of what the universe contains is not even matter. It is a mysterious form of energy called dark energy that is causing the expansion of the universe to accelerate. The universe is expanding faster and faster as a result of the push of this dark energy. We know very little about dark energy and I will not discuss it further today. Instead, I will focus on dark matter about which we know a lot more, even though we do not yet know exactly what sort of elementary particle is, may, makes up the dark matter. The best candidate so far are particles that are genetically known as cold dark matter. Now, if it is dark, how do we know it exists at all? Well, we know dark matter exists because otherwise we could not understand the way in which stars move around in galaxies. Astronomers are very good at measuring velocities of stars, and the stars in galaxies like our own Milky Way are observed to go around the center, but they're moving much too fast to be kept in orbit just by the attraction of the gravity of the matter that we can see, the stars and gas clouds. The laws of physics then tell us that there must exist some form of dark matter that we cannot see, but that is responsible for the gravitational force that keeps the galaxy in place. And this is the dark matter. This is the evidence for dark matter. Dark matter plays a key role in the evolution of our universe. It is nothing less than the component of the universe responsible for the formation of galaxies and everything we see around us today. Without the gravity of dark matter, the universe would be extremely boring there would be no galaxies, no stars, no planets, no people, no summer science exhibition. Now, the story about the formation of structure in the universe is really a fascinating story that physicists and astronomers are beginning to piece together. Amazingly, the story begins very soon after the Big Bang, about 10 to the minus 35 seconds into the life of the universe, to be precise, as a decimal point 34 zeros and 1, that fraction of a second after the beginning of our universe. Now, when the universe was born, it found itself with an excess of energy. So an energy that physicists call vacuum energy. Now, this vacuum energy it was an excess of it. The universe didn't like it. It caused the universe to become unstable and to expand very rapidly for a very brief period of time. And this period of very, very rapid expansion, exponential expansion, is known as cosmic inflation, during which the universe shook off this additional um, uh, quantum vacuum energy that um, has, was making it unstable. Now, the vacuum energy is a quantum physics phenomenon. And in the quantum world, everything fluctuates. So the so-called quantum fluctuations of inflation, they were fluctuating and they seeded the universe with a pattern of small irregularities. Some places, the universe was slightly denser than average, and in other places, it was slightly less dense than average. The universe came out of inflation, no longer universe, no longer uniform, but seeded with a pattern of small irregularities. And the amazing proposition of modern cosmology is that these quantum fluctuations 
amplified by the gravity of the cold dark matter, eventually led to the galaxies and to the other amazing majestic structures that we see in the universe today. Well, it sounds amazing. It sounds fantastic. It sounds incredible. How do we test this proposition? Because to be physics, any proposition must be testable. In physics, you can come up with any hypothesis, and it is science so long as it's testable. Now, it turns out that nature has given us the means to test the theory. And this means is the heat left over from the Big Bang. During the Big Bang, the universe was very hot. The radiation associated with this heat was emitted when the universe was a mere 380,000 years old. This, of course, sounds like a lot, but it's a tiny fraction of the current age of the universe, which is 13.7 billion years. So 380,000 years, in fact, is the human equivalent of one day in the life of the universe, a baby universe. And this is when the heat left over from the Big Bang was liberated. As, this, as the universe expanded, this heat cooled down. And it was discovered in 1964 by two physicists, Arno Penzias and Bob Wilson. They discovered this as a sea of radiation permeating the entire universe at a temperature barely above absolute zero, 2.7 degrees above absolute zero. This radiation is now so cold that it occurs in the form of microwaves. But the great thing is it allows us to examine the conditions that prevail in the universe at this very early epoch, at the equivalent of one day old in human terms. Cosmological theory predicts that the quantum fluctuations of inflation should be reflected in the temperature of the cosmic microwave background radiation. Theories in the 1980s predicted that the radiation should not be uniform, but should have a very specific pattern of hot and cold spots. This fat pattern of hot and cold spots was discovered by the COVID satellite in 1992, April the 22nd, to be precise. This was a turning point in the history of science. We could, for the first time, begin to understand the origin of the universe of galaxies. This discovery earned George Mood the Nobel Prize in Physics in 2006. And subsequent satellites have measured this pattern with ever-increasing precision. And in one of the most stunning scientific developments, certainly of my lifetime, it turns out that the data from the satellites follows exactly the theoretical predictions. This uh, stunning agreement earned Jim Peebles the Nobel Prize in Physics in 2019. In the video, we can see the growth of quantum fluctuations in action. This video shows how these tiny primordial irregularities seeded during inflation, how they grow under the action of gravity as the universe evolves. Now, the, the video is the outcome of a calculation using a large supercomputer to solve the equations of physics. In this case, the equations of general relativity, mechanics, and so on, that govern the evolution of the entire universe. It's not an animation, it's not an artist's impression, it's a real physics calculation, what we call a cosmological supercomputer simulation. And what we see in the animation is the evolution of the dark matter. No visible matter in this particular calculation. And you can see these quantum fluctuations as they grow under the action of the gravity of the cold dark matter. They become bigger, uh, they collide, and then they merge together with other clumps creating larger and larger structures. These clumps, as we shall see in a minute, are the locations where clouds of gas collect, spin up, and eventually fragment into stars, producing the beautiful galaxies that we see around us. In the past decade or so, there's been a breakthrough in our ability to calculate and simulate not just the evolution of dark matter, but also the evolution of the visible matter that gives rise to stars. In this case, the equations are a little bit more complicated, uh, but they can still be solved in a sufficiently large supercomputer. And this video now shows how the gas following the gravitational pull of the cold dark matter collects 
into dark matter clumps, which, as we saw before, collide and merge with other clumps, eventually giving rise to galaxies like the Milky Way. The outcome of the simulations has an uncanny resemblance to the real universe. Well, there has been enormous progress in the past 30 years in our understanding of the universe. We now have a credible picture of how the Milky Way and the myriad other galaxies in our universe formed. Yet, fundamental questions remain unanswered. What exactly is the dark matter? Can we detect it? Can we catch one of the particles of dark matter that is everywhere, they're everywhere, they're flowing through our bodies as we speak? Could we catch them in our laboratories? What is the dark energy? Where does it come from? Why is the expansion of our universe accelerating? And perhaps the most fundamental question of them all, how did our universe begin? These are questions of the most fundamental in nature, questions that are bound to keep subsequent generations of physicists fascinated and very busy.